in this video I'm going to be talking about Thanksgiving um, Thanksgiving how it started uh, how it originated from the Bible just like everything has how it turned it was originally for God a God's Day Thanksgiving to God all the way back to biblical times and it's turned into something else it's obviously a pagan thing now and people think they're thinking God but they don't even know what they're talking about um I'm going to be talking about um, some Nephilim gods that we are celebrating on Thanksgiving now. Okay, the connections between Thanksgiving and these um, pagan gods, and I'm going to be talking about all the way back to why why there's why there's turkey, why there's why there's football. Okay, why all these things? This is this has been a really old ancient custom that goes back so long from the Bible. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about that in this video. Um, I'm trying really hard not to mess, mash up my the, the Christmas stuff and the Halloween stuff and the Thanksgiving stuff all together. Because some of it is a mishmash of everything. It, and it's a big melting pot to what we have now. I'm going to try to separate it. In my next video, I'm, I'm going to, uh, my next Christmas video, I'm trying not to mix it up too much with this one because it all comes from the same um, occult stuff. But uh, I'm going to talk about how, where we get the wishbone from. Where we get the cornucopia, Capricorn, the, the, it connects to the stars, Capricorn. Um, I'll be talking about all that stuff. It's all tied with Thanksgiving a bit, so I'm going to mention it in this video. Anyway, so, yeah, so this video I'm going to be talking about that stuff. And here we go. If you go to Numbers 29, um, you're going to read a new feast, this specific feast, okay? If you count up all the bulls, it's, this is a, um, a fall festival type of celebration, okay? If you read, if you count the bull sacrifice, and there's lots of sacrifices in the Bible, right? Animal sacrifices. Um, but everything was doubled on this day, okay? Or tripled. And if you count up all the bulls sacrifice on this day, it would equal 70. The 70 bulls of Shabbat of Bashan. I, I, I'll probably have to make a whole other video on that, but the bulls of Bashan, the 70 bulls of Bashan, are, they represent the false gods of other nations. Okay? The lying gods of other nations, which are demons. Which are, they belong to the... Israelites would have this feast and they, if you count up all the bulls sacrificed, you have to read the whole thing. It it's 70 bulls, and what they're selling, this, this became the, the the feast of Sukkot, and they were celebrating their release from these enemies, okay, from these demons, basically. They were no longer in captivity, they were no longer, they were freed from these bulls, basically. So they would have a big feast and celebration, thanking God that he released them from their bondage to these beasts, okay? Basically. It's all very symbolic, but <clears throat> also very real. So, they would have a big feast, and uh, fall festivals go around for, you know, every culture celebrates a fall festival, or a first fruits festival, but this one's in the Bible. And people who would worship, also they're called um, bulls of um, Baal, okay, because they would have their own Thanksgiving, okay, which was just um, they would just do uh, sacrifices, child sacrifices and stuff to Baal, okay. Anyway, uh, Bashan. Again, I'm probably gonna have to do another video on this. Bashan is a mountain. Bashan. Uh, long story short, is a an evil area in the Bible. It's basically where a gate of hell is, like Mount Hermon. Is an area of gate of hell. The grotto of Pan is an area of where a, a gate of hell is. So the bulls of Bashan, it just means the demons coming from, from hell. Okay, basically. So that's what bulls of Bashan mean. Okay, back to the good version of the feast. Is the feast, it's what, it's what was now, so this feast, the original feast, where they were 
doing the bulls of Bashan, saying they were thanking God they were being released from the bulls of Bashan. This became the Feast of Tabernacles, the, the Feast of no, Sukkot, okay? Okay, and Thanksgiving was a prophecy. Um, God knew that we would, most people would be celebrating this in the future. It's on, it's in Zechariah 14, 16. And it, sh it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feasts of tabernacle. So the feast of tabernacle tackles is the, is the fall festival that most people celebrate in the future, okay? And this is a prophecy saying that people in the future from year to year would celebrate this. So God knew. This is a, I thought this was really cool. Theologians agree that this is probably a prophecy of, uh, over a fall festival or Thanksgiving. Okay, and just like everything else, Satan mocks and steals from God. So this Thanksgiving, this harvest feast became something else and okay became something else um satan used this thanksgiving to mock god right and he so what does satan do he mocks and steals from god okay so then what happened okay what's happening with thanksgiving now or the a harvest feast now okay i'm going to talk about how all this pagan stuff these other gods got involved into this harvest feast okay and it's and the uh, holiday we know as Thanksgiving now. Okay, in order to proceed with this video, again, I have to go, like the Halloween video, I have to go over who the Nephilim are. If you read Genesis 6, okay, the sons of God came down, and they mated with women, and it made the giant clans. And when the, and we, st just like they, back then, they, these, other tribes were worshiping these things as gods. Like, okay? They became gods to them. These giant, these men of renown, these giant warriors. They were known. The first temple Jew would later recall these things demons. Okay? These Nephilim is, is just an, it's a word for the demons. Okay? It's a Hebrew, it's a Hebrew, actually Nephilim is Aramaic, but it's when these things died they became the disembodied spirits of the of demons they are dis they're evil spirits unclean spirits okay and just back like that back then they started worshiping these things as their gods just like we do now these things did not go anywhere okay so the nephilim clan giant clans they were mighty they people looked up to them because they thought they were cool just like we do now and that's what these I'm gonna go into these Nephilim characters that came became known around these holidays, okay? And it's so hard to talk about just Halloween or just Thanksgiving or just Christmas or just New Year's because it's all a mishmash of this stuff. And it all actually all originated from the Bible too, but the devil has taken it and made it his, okay? So the Nephilim when um, the sons of God came down, which were de the fr first fallen angels, mated with women, and they made the giant clans. And this is what this is why God had to flood the earth and all this stuff. Okay, so if you don't know the Nephilim are, that's who the Nephilim are. And these are some of the Nephilim, char Nephilim characters I'm going to be talking about. Um, I'm going to be talking about Kronos and Rhea, Rhea and Zeus. Okay, Kronos was a Greek god from Greek mythology. He was thrown into Tartarus by the Bible refers to hell in many in a couple different words. Some are Sheol, Hades, Tartarus, Gehenna, the pit, the realm of the dead. Okay, this is all diff just different um, terms for hell. They're different. They're they're all references to hell. So Tartarus just means hell. You'll see that right here. Kronos was thrown into Tartarus. Okay, Tartarus is literally just another word for hell that's in the Bible. He's, do you think he's a good guy or a bad guy? All right. So Kronos, what happened is he ate his children. He ate his children, and he he puked them up. Anyway, one of his kids became Zeus. All right. Now Zeus. So. 
Zeus was a Greek god. I'm sure everyone's heard of him at least. He's a, the god of war, the god of thunder, blah, blah, blah. He says he's the Alpha and Omega. He is just another example of a Nephilim character. All right. He was when he before he grew up, he his mother hid him away from hid him away from Kronos and he was being breastfed by a goat. That's right, breastfed by a goat. So Zeus when he was a kid was being breastfed by a goat and while he was this goat was breastfeeding him, Zeus tore off one of his horns. I've heard two stories like the the goat gave him his horn. I heard the other story is Zeus broke the horn off the goat. Anyway, that's where the and that it became a horn of plenty. This is where we get this is where we get the cornucopia from. The cornucopia wasn't originally a basket that just gave out food. It was a de the devil's horn broken off by a Nephilim character and the the devil or the goat said I this is a horn of plenty I could feed you forever so you can either choose this version or you can choose the Jesus version where he says he can feed you and you'll never thirst again all right you guys need, which one are you gonna go for you're gonna go through the devil's horn that says he can, he can feed you forever or you're gonna go through Jesus's Jesus's uh, Jesus's bread of life or you can go through the horn of plenty which one are you going to choose? This is, this is just another way, another version of the devil mocking God and stealing from God. And he's lying, okay? He, he, he's a liar. He's not going to feed you forever. Jesus is. He's the way. He's the way. Anyway, you can find cornucopias all over the place. You can find them on American money. I can find them on many coins, ancient coins. American money, especially right here. Um, also, it became Zeus in honor of his god that gave him this horn of plenty. He, the star constellation Capricorn. This is how we get the, the constellation Capricorn uh, from the story. All right, Zeus said, "Thank you, demon goat, for your horn of plenty," and we now worship this thing all over the place. All over money, all over the sky, just like God warned you not to do. So that's where this this part this part of the harvest festival tradition comes from. So another child of Kronos was Demeter. She and her another name for her is Sirius. That's where we get the word cereal from. She's the god of grain in the harvest festival. Okay, I'm gonna talk more about her in my next video because it has a lot to do with Christmas. But I wanted to touch on her. She's a god of um, barley and, and, and grain. All right. So you were also also pr praising her during this false festival. The um, people later communities became very very obsessed with her and Persephone, her daughter, and they would have this big. They would have this big, per they would have this, <laughs> I'm trying to, this is where we get parades from too, but it's so hard to get, stay focused on just one thing. Parades, I, I'm probably going to do another video on parades because it's just, it's too much. Dem Demeter would go around the world on a chariot that was pulled by snakes and she would give out grain and seeds to everyone. All right. That's a hint where Santa's sleigh and, and <laughs> treats come from. Um, there's a little hint for you right there. But anyway, so these the the uh, these old Celtic tri these old Celtic rituals they would they would worship these gods and they would do pig sacrifices to the to her. D Hello, like this is obviously evil. All right, so this is you know on parades they they would go they th hand out they throw out candy and stuff for the kids. That's where this stuff comes from. Um, <clears throat> giving out treats to the kids to the whole world comes from this this particular god all right and it's, and it's so funny because her chariot was pulled by snakes so creepy not not reindeer snakes <laughs> okay i'm just telling you this is where all that that stuff comes from i'll probably mention it again in my other video but she's the god of grain so i wanted to bring it up in my thanksgiving thanksgiving video this is why we still have 
have parades during the holidays, why we have Thanksgiving parades, Christmas parades, that inauguration parades, that stuff all comes from the Bible, but duh, the devil has flipped it. Okay, and the New Year's, oh man, I, I, I'll have to make another video about that. Do you guys think it's a coincidence that she's holding snakes and is being pulled by dragons? And everybody has wor worshipped her then and they are still worshipping her now? The Bible, she, the devil will keep, just keep, keep changing her name, okay? Like she was Ceres and she's Demeter and she's Asterisk in the Bible. Asterisk is the god of, of floats too, like par parade floats you know, floats and parades, handing out candy. That stuff originally was not her handing, it was her throwing out seeds to the world. And, but they would do a festival for her and they'd go on chariots and they'd throw out seeds, okay, for the harvest festival. And they would throw out cake, they'd throw out a ritual, they would do pig sacrifices. And they'd also make cakes in the shape of snakes and penises and throw them out. That's why we have candy and stuff at parades, and that's why there's Santa Claus handing out treats to the world, okay? I kind of gave in to the little the Santa Claus video. I'll probably mention it again. She's also the Statue of Liberty. One of her, one of her attributes is her holding a, a torch, okay? And she's for um, liberty and for the law. It's it's all her, okay? It just the devil will just keep changing her name, all right? But we still worship this thing. We still give our time, time and energy to this demonic entity. I'm not kidding. And the God warned you and warned you and warned us not to put our our time, energy, and emotions towards something that was not Him. And that's what we have been doing. There is a big old statue of a demon in downtown. New York City okay and we just think it's oh it's just a it's a good thing this is a good sign we can't we are so brainwashed we are the human the human race is in big trouble big trouble all right no one reads the Bible they just keep falling into these traditions digging themselves deeper into the Tartarus to the pit all right all right uh, we still worship Demeter De uh, asterisk in the Bible okay she is the same. The devil will just keep manifesting her name. She is the Starbucks chick. We are still worshiping. The devil warned you stop worshiping her. She's Asterisk. She's Ceres. She's Aphrodite. Okay. The devil has literally just keep changing her name. It's literally the same chick. Literally the same chick. Mary from the Catholic Church is her. Okay. The god of fertility. The goddess of fertility. The god of prostitution. The god of torches the god of grain it, we can call whatever you want it's all her all right it's all her and we are still giving our time and energy to this particular quote unquote god this thing is not a god this thing is a fallen god all right a fallen principality this thing is in tartarus this thing is in hell please stop giving your time and energy and your festivals to her all right. The God that we worship on Easter. Okay. The God of fertility. It's all her. Okay. Same attributes. Look at the attributes. God says look at the attributes of these entities and see that they're the same. Also Mother Earth is her. Mother Earth is her. You cannot worship Mother Earth. Mother. No. Uh-uh. Okay. I'm going to briefly touch up on the wishbone breaking the wishbone this is devon really really old witchcraft okay the etruscans these were the ones that were doing the uh, pig sacrifices and doing they were the first, they were before the romans and the greeks okay they were the ones doing pig, pig sacrifices to demeter and throwing cakes in the shape of penises out and they're birds as is reading bird bones was a really old divination breaking bones and reading the bird bones the size and shapes of bird bones goes back way way long from a long time ago it's really old witchcraft you are not supposed to be doing this stuff 
God does not want you to be doing this stuff. You are not supposed to be breaking bones in half and the bigger size, the bigger piece being good luck. This is this is old witchcraft. It is really evil. Please do not keep doing this, okay? Uh, it's known as sternomancy, okay? They used to do this with people too. They'd break the, the, the breastplate of human bones to in, in, in uh, witchcraft too, sternomancy. The wishbone is the the um, sternum of, of a bird. Uh, reading bird is devi- reading bird bones is really old divination. This is really evil. You're not supposed to be doing this. Okay, please don't do this on Thanksgiving. Now, after all this, the in the 1800s, 1700s, 1800s, England and Europe started celebrating harvest home. Harvest home was practically pre-Thanksgiving before Americans started calling it Thanksgiving. Um, Harvest Home was a harvest festival and they would have parades. They'd put all their food onto the t- onto the cr- onto the um, crates and stuff, march them down the town singing and shouting and having a party basically. And the men would get really drunk and the women would cook all the food. And they would also have sports. They would have some sport wrestling matches and all these different kinds of sports going on. And you can see how all this, why there's football and stuff, why why, why sports are in the winter almost. <laughs> it's not a coincidence that we celebrate all this stuff. All this stuff got dumped into our current Thanksgiving. The wishbone, the parades, the sports, okay. So now I'm going to be talking about the American Thanksgiving. Obviously, Americans did not invent Thanksgiving, okay? It's a harvest festival has been going on since the beginning of time. We did not invent Thanksgiving. Oh, boy. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about the American pagan connection more. All right. So the I'm going to talk about the turkey Obviously, the sternomancy was going on for a long time. It would usually happen with a chicken, though. But I th- believe that the Native Americans brought the turkey into it. Because I, the turkey was a totem god to them. So I'm thinking that's how the turkey got involved into the current Thanksgiving. Which is still evil, okay? I'm not trying to say that the Puritans were evil there both probably still pagan all both of them okay i'm not gonna get into that right now i'm gonna get into um the current more current information because i know everyone already knows about the native american and the puritan false teaching that they just got along and it was happy (laughs) a happy time i think everyone already knows what really happened it was like genocide it was but it's more complicated than that i'm not gonna do a history lesson on that I will put a link below that goes into a lot of detail about what happened during this time because it's the no one was innocent okay there was no innocent party involved it was all very complicated I'll put a link below if you want to know about that stuff anyway okay so the Sarah Hale made Thanksgiving a national holiday in America okay she is the one that really pushed for it to be a national holiday in the in the uh, mid 1900s. She, you might know her. She uh, wrote "Mary Had a Little Lamb." Okay, she wrote some poems, and one of the famous ones is "Mary Had a Little Lamb." Anyway, she was married to a Freemason. All right, she was married to a Freemason. She was really into old books and stuff like that. And she is the one that wanted Thanksgiving on a Thursday in the month of November for Americans. And I think, and that is all very strange because this is getting into pagan stuff right now. Um, so it's an old Norse pagan tradition that the blood mana or blood moon or sacrifice month blood month was in november this is when they would kill all the animals because they didn't want to feed them through the through the harvest they were they didn't want to feed all the animals so they would kill them so that's where we get the name november from it means 
um, Blotmana. It's from Blood Month or Blood Moon. Okay. So November is the number 11 and 11 is chaos in the Bible. Okay. And I'm not talking about why it was. So she probably picked it November for that reason. And because she was reading, she was really, Sarah Hale was really into these old books. And so she probably just picked this these days on purpose. Okay. And she wanted it on a Thursday after the god Thor, who's a Nephilim. Okay. All these part god, part human being things are mentioned in the bible as the nephilim they were unclean spirits because they are combining two things that did not belong together when the sons of god came down and mated with women they made the nephilim thor is just another archetype of the nephilim so thor is a god of thunder (laughs) okay and he his chariot was driven by two goats I think it's interesting that these gods are always associated with snakes and goats. God is like hint, 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 hint. Anyway, Thor is the re- is where we get the name Thursday. All right, because we name everything after demons. <laughs> we name a cereal after a demon. We get the word milk from Moloch. We name everything, even our days, after Greek gods. Which are the Nephilim. Which are demons. So Thursday is the name of Thor. On the blood month. On sacrifice month. On blood month. So I think it's weird that she just picked that day to be thanking. She didn't say anything. She said to be thanking God. But get, get, guess which God she is thanking. Okay. And she was married to a Freemason. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Her husband died and the Freemasons took care of her. By giving her all these all this power to make books and stuff like that and all this influence. I don't think that's a coincidence at all. No, it's not a coincidence that Baal is also who is also in the Bible as the god of thunder. Do you guys get that it's, again, just like with Asterisk and Aphrodite, it just because the devil slaps on a different name, like Thor, it's still Baal. It's still Baal. Okay, the the devil will just slap on different names to the same demons, the same gods. It's still, Thor is still a ball archetype since the beginning of time, and we are still worshiping Thor. We are still Thor worshipers. We are still ball worshipers. Everyone thinks the devil is stupid. No one even believes in this stuff. (laughs) You got, when you die... You are going to have a rude awakening, okay? Please wake up before you die to this stuff, to this deception. These these characters on TV are still just demonic archetypes, all right? Thor is just a ball cover-up. The devil just likes to modernize and switch things around. But you could still see the same characteristics of ball which was the very first false god in the Bible. And he's just an archetype for Satan, all right? You have to pick which god you are going to follow because these ones are leading you far away from where you really want to go when you die, okay? This is the real way, the true way for everlasting life, for infinite nourishment okay he is the one that you need to be trusting in and not these not spending all your time and energy on this other stuff that because it became a tradition for us just to do it blindly we are literally being tricked over and over again by the same dudes and no one ever ever realizes that when you die, you'll be with the God that you chose. Okay, so please be with the good guy, the actual good guy. All right, so think about this stuff, guys. If you want to thank God, for, for, for thank this God. All right, make sure you are not falling into these pagan traps. All right, thank you.